Hello everyone. So today we're going to look at a Dodge Ram and it's a Eco Diesel 3.0 half ton truck and it's set a P0299 turbocharger under boost code. So I took a flat recording. This is it right here. Right now we're looking at mass airflow rate, which is not in grams per second. That's why it's such a high number. Boost pressure and boost pressure target on the top. This is actually a filled turbocharger on this one. So I was at a dead stop. I floor it. Now I'm at about 40 miles an hour. I'm reaching, I'm not reaching max boost. I'm reaching about four PSI under, which is what it takes to set the code. So if this truck has no matching boost for a second or two, and it's four PSI or under the target, it's gonna set the P0299 code. And it's gonna set that code, and it's gonna actually um, keep it in an active code state. So even cycling the key is probably not gonna allow you to have power back. So unfortunately on this, if you don't have a good scan tool and you want to clear that code, you would be okay and get your boost back. But when you're in limp mode with the under boost code, it could be many, many key cycles and drive events for that turbocharger to start working again. So the failure isn't actually occurring. It feels like it because you have no boost and all your warning lights are on, like your throttle light is on, um, indicating that you have reduced throttle control, which is by wire and then you have a check engine light obviously this is a known good vehicle sorry right here on this video behind me it matches within a psi is fine so back to what i was saying you know the underboost could it's kind of unfortunate because i've seen a lot of customers that have that failure and it's usually software sit related and it only happened for a brief second but now you're in light mode for maybe hundreds of miles if you're traveling and you know you get to a shop they clear it all of a sudden had it it's fine drove it 20 miles floored it a bunch of times and it's fine you know they tend to let them go a lot and i think that upsets a lot of people of course so i like to al always do a flight recording just so i know because sometimes you're three psi under and it's not setting a code like the flight recording I showed you in the beginning of the video. So that flight recording in the beginning of the video took 600 miles for that vehicle to set a check engine light and go into light mode and have no power. So you got to try and do everything you can to get familiar with the scan tool, to record data, to know what data is normal, to know what your target is versus your actual. And that applies to your variable geometry turbo actual position and target position in the scan tool because if those two are off yeah it should set a code but it's not actually uh, you know if it's not actually matching that can cause an under boost issue so and then this is a boost sensor air filter that was clogged causing under boost this is one under boost uh, vehicle that had a lot of soot in it. Now these engines have a lot of soot regardless inside their intakes, um, induction on the valves, but all that stuff can get sooted up. EGR valve can get heavily sooted, runner control heavily sooted. All those things can be causing the under boost to occur. But again, this typically, if you clear that code, you can usually drive them and you're not gonna feel anything unless you have a boost leak and yeah, it sets the check engine line within a mile or two, but unfortunately, these things are not failing for very long and they're very intermittent, and that can be a real problem to diagnose. So kind of getting familiar with what level of soot is normal. This is what I would consider heavy soot. I mean, you could shovel the soot out of this intake on this one. So that would be a sign that, you know what, maybe you're over fueling and all the soot is causing the turbocharger to stick, but that is a slippery road to go down, especially if it's out of warranty. This is a soot on the EGR pipe. There's a little bit of soot on the runner control. This is a turbocharger, so if you gotta replace a turbo, that's actually gonna be a cab removal. So you need to have a 
way of getting your cab off of your truck. Um, and it's a very big job, you know, 15 hour job if you're taking your time doing it right and you work on cars every day. If you're rushing it and you've done hundreds, maybe you can do it in eight hours, but this is a turbocharger off. The engine does not have to be removed. I just have this one on engine stand. So this behind me is talking about you just really want to do your due diligence and check out your flight recordings, perform the flight recordings, learn how to do your flight recordings because that's going to help you get through these, these intermittent failures on the eco diesel. And that's it. Have a good one.